In my opinion, the most important handgun to come out of World War II was the Walther Design German P38. It influenced more post-war handguns than anything else. The Browning High Power, for instance, and even the 1911 were pre-war guns, and even though they influenced post-war designs, not to the degree that the P38 did. Now, the P38 itself features a heel magazine release, which is different than the other ones we have here in the armory today. In order to release it, you push it to the rear, and this is widely copied also in guns like the Sig P210. Magazine comes out the bottom. Now, this single stack magazine is, is of such good design, it's been copied almost verbatim by SIG, HK, and other manufacturers after the war. The grip and grip shape, as well as the grip frame angle, once again, have been widely copied, as well as the double action trigger mechanism. And the locking mechanism itself, which I'm about ready to show you here once I disassemble the gun, has been used by the US military in the M9 Beretta handgun since the mid 80s. As far as disassembling it from here, standard procedure in respect that once the magazine's out, you want to visually inspect the chamber, weapon's clear. At this point, you manually lock the slide to the rear by pushing up on the slide stop as you pull the slide to the rear, like that. It's always a good feature in a service handgun if you can disassemble the gun or field strip it with the slide manually locked to the rear because that allows you to use that as an additional visual indicator there's no ammunition in the gun. At this point, the throw lever up front, very similar to that one that we found on the P08 Luger. Now, I go ahead and release my slide release, and the slide comes out the front after I lower the hammer. This is our locking block we talked about, used in the Beretta M9, as well as, interestingly enough, the Czech VZ58 series of rifles. You push on the plunger in the back, it drops the locking block out of the locking recesses in the slide, now it comes with to the front. That's field stripping the P38. Piece of cake to clean. You really don't have to take out the dual recoil springs for field stripping. You can if you want to, like you get it sand or grit or whatnot. But essentially, that's how you break it down. Pretty slick design. There's two features on the P38. One has not been continued on, kind of died with this gun more or less. The other one was widely used. One is a loaded chamber indicator. When there's a round in the chamber, a spring-loaded plunger was pushed out the rear told you the chamber was empty and it's something you could see and more importantly feel in low light conditions. Other manufacturers have done loaded chamber indicators. Actually it's become quite common on service handguns today but the one with the P38 kind of faded into history deemed to be too complex and too difficult to manufacture. There's simply easier ways to get the same job done. The one thing that did carry on to post-war designs and like I said was used not only like the trigger mechanism and the locking mechanism in the M9 Beretta is the hammer drop safety. The hammer drop safety acts as not only a decocker, it deactivates the trigger mechanism at the same time. The gun's perfectly safe right now. If I want to reactivate the trigger mechanism to say fire around the chamber, I have to push it forward and then pull the trigger double action style. Very similar to the trigger mechanism used on the M9 Beretta. Okay, P38's next. Bingo. Let me load her up. Okay, now I'm back to double action mode. This is a loaded chamber indicator that Ken and I talked about earlier in the show. All right, here we go. Double action mode, round the chamber. All right. Shooter's ready? Mm-hmm. Stand by. Four flat. Much better hits. Real good hits. Yeah, real good hits. And obviously the sights are a huge advantage. I had to pay attention to the first double action trigger pull. After that, it's got a real clean single action break. Let's be honest, that is a long, heavy double action. Yeah, it is. It is. Remember, the Germans regarded the double action trigger as much as a safety factor as they did the ability to get off a quick first shot. Right. Probably more weight towards safety than it was a quick first shot. Yeah. Cool gun, good hits. All right, let's move on to the Radom. Got it. Hey, thanks for watching the Vickers Tactical YouTube channel. To subscribe, click here. And to watch some of my favorite videos, click here. Have a good one. LAV out.